so far that programming is largely taking input from the user, processing that input, and generating some output. And oftentimes during the output, we're working with string data. And maybe we want to take some data in and display it as part of a sentence. And so we've seen how we can use concatenation to combine strings together or combine string data together. And we also just recently looked at String Builder. There's two other formats or two other ways of doing this. One is to use the string.format method and the other is interpolated strings. So this all lends to the idea that there's multiple ways to accomplish anything when you get into programming. And that's why none of us code the same way. So to demonstrate the string format and string the interpolated string, I create a little application here where we have some input. We're entering a client's name and an account balance. And we're going to click one of these four buttons and we want to generate the output of the client's name has a balance and whatever that balance is in a period. And there's a button here we can clear that output so we can see all four of these do the exact same thing. Now in developing the interface I just want to show you what the items are named. So we have our two text boxes, txt client, txt account. We have four buttons, btn concatenation, btn string builder, btn string format, btn interpolation. Our output is a label, LBL output, and another button to clear, which is BTN clear. You're going to see those used in code. That's why I wanted to show you those. So let me go to the live version here. And you'll see I can clear the output with this button. And there is the code for that BTN clear button. Just simply setting the LBL output.txt to a null string. Now let's take a look at the four buttons that produce this output. And we'll look at the familiar concatenation, where we're using the plus sign as the concatenation operator. In this code, we're going to get the, the text from the txt client text box and put that into a string variable called client. We'll do the same thing with txt account.txt. We're going to parse that out as a double value and put that into a variable called ACCT. It's a double variable. And then our output is the client plus I have a literal string of has a balance of. Notice the space before and after so things don't run together. And then the value of ACCT or account dot two string converted to currency. That's what the C2 is. And then I'm going to concatenate to that a literal period. Again, let me clear my output. I'm going to click concatenation. And there we see our string assembled of Ethan Hunt has a balance of $561.29. I'm going to include the output and do the same thing with string builder. And now let's look at the code for the string builder button which is, again, we're going to get the client and the account values and put them into two variables. I'm going to do this the same way across all, all uh, four methods. In all of those, we, we could bypass that method and put those directly into our assembly of the string. But I think it's cleaner sometimes just to put those into variables first. Here we're going to use a string builder object. I call it SB. It's a new string builder. I'm going to start by assigning it the value of client. That's going to be the beginning of my sentence. Then I'm going to append to it our little string of has a balance of, append our ACCT converted to a string as currency, and append the period. Now it seems like a lot more work. The reality is string builder is more efficient than concatenation. And so you'll probably see that used a lot as you look at other people's code. But string builder does a lot more than just concatenation and putting strings together. It also allows us to insert and to remove and do all kinds of other operations. And then because it's not really a string, it's a string builder object. When I put this to the to our label output, I've got to convert that SB object to a string. And I get the same result. Again, I'm going to clear. Let's take a look at the, at the string format. So in the string format, we're going to use string.format as our method. So dot .format or format is a method of the string class. So we're going to reference it by referencing the class name and the method dot format. And here we have a, a string that contains some placeholders. And those placeholders are in curly brackets. So we have a placeholder 0, has a balance of, and then a placeholder 1. And then I do a colon in C2 to say I want that placeholder 1, that value, to be converted to currency with two decimals. That is all in a string. Notice the quotations. And then a comma. And then what I want to have be the values for those placeholders. And these are going to be in the order. So client here is placeholder 0 simply because it's the next item uh, in the parameter list. And so it's going to insert the value of client for placeholder 0. And it's going to insert the value of account for placeholder 1 and convert that value to two decimals. 
So if I click on string format, you'll see we get the exact same output. This is a great way of just very quickly introducing some variable values into a formatting string. I'm going to clear that output and let's look at the interpolated string. Interpolation is kind of a fancy word for combining literal strings with data uh, in a string output. And it's very similar to the string format, but actually probably a little bit easier. So again, we're going to get our client and our account data. And here our LBL output.txt equals. And the key here is this dollar sign. The dollar sign is the interpolation operator. This is okay. In this string, we're going to accept some variables in placeholders, and we want to put that variable data into this literal string. So here we have client, has a balance of. Again, we're going to take the account information, convert that to two decimals, and we get the exact same output. This is a fairly new methodology in C Sharp, but it's one that I think is really valuable and one that I will be using a lot more moving forward. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the C Sharp Xamarin Programming Cohort playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.